What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode eight of SPI TV. Thank you for joining me today. In this important episode, we're gonna talk about how to contact an A-lister in your niche market. Somebody who you might wanna contact because you want them as a guest on your show. Or maybe you just wanna establish a relationship with them or perhaps some sort of partnership. How do you go about doing it? Well, stay tuned and you'll find out. Now you've probably heard the advice before when growing your business to contact influencers. And that's why it's really important to consider reaching out to A-listers in your particular niche market. This can be really helpful for the growth and expansion and overall virality of your brand. However, you have to also realize that the people who are there at the top already, they have a lot of things going on. And so there's a, there's a very specific approach that you have to take when reaching out to them in order to get the best chance of having a response in some way, shape or form. So I'm gonna give you seven tips to reaching out to A-listers in your particular market. All right, so tip number one, start with the low hanging fruit. A-listers who seem to already be easily contacted, meaning you might be able to go to iTunes and search through different podcasts and see who were guests on those shows already. Those people are used to having people contact them. And if you're looking to have a guest on your show too, that's the perfect place to start. Who else has already done it. In addition to that, you can also look to see who's coming out with a book or a course or something that they're going to want to market very soon. And the reason that's important is because these people will often schedule as many points of contacts as possible because they know that the more people they can reach, the more other people out there who are going to help them, the better their book or their course is going to do. So check out to see who's coming out with a book soon. And you can do that through Google searches. You might be able to find a pre-seller list on Amazon as well. Reach out to those people in your particular market and you'll find that those those people will be more responsive and that's where you want to start. All right, tip number two, connect with these A-lessers before you reach out to them personally on social media. So on Twitter or on Facebook, you might be able to actually feature them on your particular website as well and then use Twitter or Facebook to establish that connection there and offer some value to them first before you reach out on email and try to get some value back. One thing you could do is really easily retweet some of their stuff, or you might be able to just give them a quick compliment on those platforms as well, so that when you do send that email out, it's not gonna be so cold anymore. All right, tip number three, keep that email that you send out really short and really to the point. I get emails all the time from people who are just awesome, but they're telling me their whole life story and I don't have time to read all of those and neither do all the A-listers that you're reaching out to as well. I can perhaps ask for that later, but if you send me a quick email about who you are and what you're trying to do to help me and that we also had a connection on social media as well, that's a great place to start and that's exactly what you wanna do. So again, keep those emails very, very short and to the point. All right, tip number four, even along with those emails, look for some sort of connection, some small connection that you might have with this person already. Maybe it's a friend, maybe it's maybe you guys went to the same college together, maybe you both have kids, maybe you both have Maltese puppies, I don't know what it is, maybe a favorite football team. Do some research beforehand about this person and you can find out what you can add in this email. Again, just a quick little mention of it to spark a little bit of, oh wow, this guy has the same interest as me, maybe I should pay a little bit more attention in their mind. So again, look for those small connections. A great place for that is LinkedIn and also there's an app called Refresh that's really cool. That'll actually give you some insight on a lot of people in terms of uh, different photos and posts on social media, um, where they've been recently, where they work, and also some of their favorite teams and places to eat. Those, are, those can be really cool conversation starters or little things you can put in those emails to show that you're just not some person just trying to spam them and, and, and you know contact them for some beneficial reason for yourself, but you're actually doing the research to make sort of a true connection there based on that small little thing that you have in common. Tip number five, if at all possible, even before you reach out to this person yourself, have somebody else who already knows this person introduce them for you. That trust that they have with this person you're trying to reach out to is gonna be much stronger than anything you could write in a particular email to this person and any small connection you can make on social media. How does this work? Well, for example, let's say I were to talk about Caleb Wojcik. If, and if you don't know who this person is, he's my videographer. And just the fact that I'm talking about him here just increases the level of, of his uh, authority just so much already just by me talking about it. So if you were to ever see him, you would know that he's there to provide value and he's my videographer. And uh, you know, you might potentially go to his website, diyvideoguy.com to get your video needs done for you and your business. So it's that easy. 
All right, so tip number six is if you eventually have a conversation with this person and you are going to be doing something with him like a podcast interview, you wanna make sure that anything he has to do is already done for him. Anything that he needs to uh, send an email about for, if you're doing a webinar, for example, it's all cut and paste, copied, really easy for them to do. You want them to do as little work as possible and save all that energy for when they're on your show or that partnership happens and they're promoting your stuff. Whatever the case may be, do what you can to help this person out. You're providing value to them, but you're also making it really easy to do that. So make that happen. And tip number seven, probably the most important tip here, is you don't have to always focus on the A-listers. Sometimes you might get rejected by every single A-lister you contact, but you know what? They're not the most important people. You also wanna consider the what you might qualify as the B or C-listers, the people who are in and around the same level as you, or maybe just below the A-listers, because those people are gonna be much easier to contact. They're gonna be really interested in working with you and do a lot more than what those A-listers might do to help promote your brand. And uh, that's been one of the best things I've done for my podcast, actually. A lot of the people who are featured on my podcast, and actually the interviews that most people enjoy are the ones with people who have they've never heard of their name before, but they are more real and uh, some of that, some, sometimes those people have a lot more time to help you out as well. So think about that, the B listers, blisters. Thank you again so much for checking out this episode of SPI TV. I really appreciate it. Please subscribe to the channel. These shows come out every single Friday. I'm so happy to be producing them with you with my videographer, Caleb Wojcik. It's not working this time. Uh, but anyway, I want, I want to hear from you actually. So tell me a story of when you reached out to an A-lister and if you have a link to share related to that, maybe you got them on your show or maybe you were a guest on their blog as a guest blogger, let me know how it happened. Leave a comment if you're watching this on YouTube right there on YouTube. If you're on the blog, you can leave it there. Or if you're watching this on iTunes as a video podcast, that's awesome. Head on over to watchspi.tv and find episode eight. And again, you can leave a link to that because I want to I want to read it. I want to know what you did. And I think it would be really inspirational for the rest of the community. And just to show, you got to ask. If you don't ask, it's not going to happen. Thank you so much. And I'll see you next week in episode nine of SPI TV.